The presidency of George H.W. Bush and his career in public service covers decades of American history. Joining us now to put his presidency into perspective is presidential historian Michael Beschloss, who's written nine books on the presidency. He's also a contributor to PBS NewsHour, joins me now from Washington, D.C. Michael, a, a one-term president is something uh, the modern generation of Americans haven't seen in the last 20 years. What's his legacy going to be in the time that he spent in office? Well, you know, sometimes people think that a one-term presidency means that you haven't been a great president. And yes, he was not reelected, but he was not reelected to some extent because he did things that were really important, such as uh, presided over the end of the Cold War. George Bush made a relationship with the Soviet leader, Mikhail Gorbachev, that made Gorbachev comfortable enough to open the Berlin Wall and let Eastern Europe go out of the Soviet orbit, let Germany unify within NATO. And as a result, when Bush ran for president, in 1992 for re-election, he couldn't make the argument that you Americans really need my foreign policy skills because they felt we're in the wake of the Cold War. It's better to get someone whose obsession is with the domestic, which described Bill Clinton who won. He said uh, later that he regrets that famous line, read my lips, no new taxes, because so much of the emphasis was on the quote instead of on the status of the economy. And the idea that there was a president willing to make a compromise because that was what was good seems almost antiquated now. It does, and especially a, con a compromise that was very harmful to him politically because the Democrats got the compromise out of him. And then they said, Bush is someone who breaks his promises. And what's more, in 1992, Bill Clinton made an argument, the country is in recession, it's spitting out of control. In retrospect, we now know that at the time of the 92 election, George Bush was presiding over an economy that was getting better, but what he didn't have was communication skills. He wasn't able to make that plain to Americans. You know, we've also talked a bit about this after the passing of McCain, but he seems a, a, a different generation of the Republican Party that had room for such, I would say, a moderate voice as his. Right. He was a modern, new, uh, moderate New England Republican. Those things are all an oxymoron now. How many Republicans do we have in national office, office from uh, New England these days? Virtually none. And the other thing is that this was someone who was known for reaching across the aisle, known for not talking in uh, over overdone ways about himself, not, in, not getting into brawls with people. All those things seem very antique in 2018. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you and I will see a day, Hari, when uh, those things are in fashion once again. Do you think that the Willie Horton ad against Michael Dukakis ushered in a, a new era? Because while that is still a bad ad, uh, when you look at it now, it seems tame compared to what kind of ads are on the air every two years. It seems tame now, but that was something that hinted at racial animosity. It was certainly by no means uh, George Bush's best moment in later years. He was not proud of it. The best he could say was, I make a differentiation between campaigning mm -hmm. and governing. In retrospect, he never should have allowed the ad that actually the Willie Horton ad was an independent ad, but there was an official ad that uh, hinted at some of the same things. They should not have done that. You know, we, we talk about the fact that it's, there's only been two families that have had a father and a son president, but it's hard to understate the enormous impact that one family has had on American politics, going from George H.W.'s father all the way down to his sons and possibly grands, grandkids. That's exactly right. Uh, for over 30 years at least, you had Bushes at the center of presidential politics. And Hari, maybe not only that period of time, because I once talked to a French ambassador whose father had that same job. And in the 1950s, Prescott Bush, George Bush's father, introduced George to this ambassador, said in the 1950s, this is my son George. He's going to be president someday. <laughs> All right. Michael Beschloss joining us from Washington, D.C. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Harry.